Hey, it's Sean. I'm back again. I'm going to paint some leather today. I've decided to paint his little skirt area here. And um, let's get started. I've used uh, black and brown MSP as the, the base dark color. And then I've used um, ruddy leather MSP as the mid-tone. And I'm going to highlight with MSP blonde hair. I have that on my um, it's a silicone palette here, silicone, silicone, however you say it. Um, this is the mix of colors starting with black and brown on the far right. Worked up through ready leather, blended into blonde hair. I've got water droplets above that to aid in uh, giving me the proper dilution so I can get the right consistency as I need it. I won't make up, mix up the water into my paint until I need to know how watery it really needs to be. So um, let's just get started on that. Let's get this camera lined up so you can see it. I've already applied the base coat of uh, black and brown over the leather. I was about to video that, but then the sun came in my window here and uh, really blasted out the footage. So. I had to correct that. Now I'm back to just filming. Um, basically, you can see the process here. I'm using this long old rigger brush so you can just see the bristles and not my fingers. I really like these kind of liner brushes. They're they're fantastic, I guess, for painting. I'm, I'm getting used to using these. Um, the bristles are nice. It's nice to be able to work around and get into these tight cracks. There's usually a lot of tight spots that you need to reach on a miniature. And I've used these specialty brushes for years for um, reaching these hard to reach areas. I, I ordered riggers and liner brushes to give me um, a special reach when I need it and um, but you know I can use them to paint as well at least base coats and midtones and things like that when I get into the detail work these aren't going to suffice but they are they're good for what they are good for and um, you know I'm going to actually take a look into see if any of these uh, higher quality brush manufacturers make decent riggers in the scales of brushes that I need the sizes um, that's something I'll check out later today Basically now I've just got a little bit of ruddy leather mixed into the was that black and brown, and I'm applying that uh, again in the layering fashion, leaving a little bit of the previous color where it needs to be in the shade, the shaded areas, the shadowy area areas, and I'm just trying to hit up these uh, areas of leather. I'm going to work through this pretty quickly so that I can get it all on camera, and then we can work on the next piece. I will see if I can fit it in in 15 minutes. The 10 minute mark was repeatedly missed, so I'm not going to aim for that anymore. I think 15 minutes is more reasonable. And uh, it takes a little bit longer for the video to process. Now you'll see here the paint's still wet. You can see that shine on it, and that's fine. i do a little bit of wet blending. It helps the colors to marry together and look right. I'm not too worried about it. This isn't, you know, straight up wet blending by any means, but it is sort of wet blending because the paints are wet as I blend them using the layering technique um, if you want to be technical and that's what these videos are all about is my technical approach my technique and um, you know I'll talk about everything that I think of as I'm doing this you know while you're painting miniatures a lot of times you let your mind wander and watch TV or whatever shows on Netflix and listen to music, you know, and, and uh, you don't really think about what you're doing. You can just kind of get your brain on autopilot. But while you're learning and practicing, um, it's you, you have to engage your brain and um, really just not be on autopilot. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm acting as if, you know, I haven't done this a billion times and I'm trying to explain as I go each and everything that I do so that you can, you know, take a look into my methodology here and maybe learn something. Um, what I've got is this next color which is pure ruddy brown and I'm apply this where I think the color needs to be strongest hopefully that's on video and focus it looks alright I'm uh, just bringing that in over this dark area of brown here that's real nice I hope that's on yeah that's a real nice color for for this leather I'm giving it its overall leather tone now already you know quickly just worked up through the shadows doesn't have to take an eternity for something like this um, because it's all about the mid-tone coverage here I really want to see this this nice 
almost red, orange, brown as the overall color. And so I'm applying it overall. And uh, that means overall everything that I've done except for the shadows, the stuff that's in the recesses. I think that's about right. He's got a little bit right down there that I missed in there. These rigger brushes are nice for getting into these little cracks and stuff down there. I'm going to do uh, two coats of this after this first one dries. And it's kind of warm already in here. It's not even 10 o'clock yet, I think, here. And it's already getting up there in temperature. So my paint's going to be drying pretty quickly. Um, I don't want to have to use the hair dryer here to speed it up. I don't think I have to so much today. I'm going to be painting with pure uh, ruddy leather in this next stage so that I can uh, really just establish the overall color. This is probably the last color that I'm going to use the rigger brush for because after that I'm going to start uh, worrying about uh, getting the edges of this painted and I want to make sure I got a nice crisp detail brush for that sort of thing. A concept that I like to think of and remind myself of as I paint is that you can work with bigger brushes for base coating and mid-tones and then as you move into the detail work you decrease your brush size so you're working with a smaller brush that is a good way to kind of like um, automatically help your uh, your painting on the details if you move to a smaller size brush as you get there and and uh, that's that's a common approach um, you know it's not a hidden secret or mystery and people use that quite frequently you have to have your different range of brush sizes you know it's part of the fun of the hobby is um, you know the collection of all these different tools and accessories we use especially the the key ones you know for me uh, paints and brushes you know without which none of this would be happening um, and I really just love to have all kinds of brushes and paints you know I'm a real big paint nerd as I refer to myself I, I love to have all these different colors yes I know I could blend them from all the basic colors if I really needed to or felt like it but you know, it's just a matter of uh, convenience, and it's fun to, to work on new blends and ch take colors that aren't associated with one another and come up with nice uh, layering, um, you know, associations of colors with one another. Uh, you know, you don't have to rely, even though uh, uh, something like Reaper Master Series has this triad system, you don't have to rely on that. And of course, you can break free of those. It's color, after all, you know. It's one of these creative, expressive types of deals, and uh, that's the beauty of it. Right there you can see now I've got the ruddy leather has pretty much been um, base coated in the mid-tone. I can definitely see the difference between this and the dark black areas. And now I'm going to switch brushes and move into the highlights um, stages. So I'm going to use a Windsor & Newton Series 7 and size 0. And I'm going to apply and do a, a blend on my palette of that ruddy leather into this uh, blonde hair color. And... Um, that's what I'm going to use now. It's going to be quite a jump in color, but all of these things can always be toned down later if your highlights are too stark. You can use glazes, which for leather I almost universally will do because glazing and leather just work very well together. I'm only going to be worried about hitting the edges of this. Um, I've decided my stylistic approach for this particular piece um, after looking at some minis that I, I like and want to... Uh, you know, emulate here in this paintwork. And so um, with the leather, you know, the interesting thing about leather is that you can always find reference images around your house of leather and in almost whatever color that you want. You know, if you know if you have a woman living with you at any point you can or you are a woman, um, you can just go look at purses as a good source. Um, uh, old leather briefcases if you're, you know, if you have any of those. A belt, that's a good one, old leather belts. And you can just examine the way that leather uh, is in its various stages of wear and tear from brand new to old and old and worn down and get an idea of how it works. Uh, keeping in mind that leather itself is uh, basically just skin of, uh, of some kind of animal or another and it's hide. And, um, you know, once you have that knowledge, you can kind of think about highlighting it almost as if you would skin, but with certain rules applied to it. Um, I, I, you know, rules being extremely loose, um, 
for instance, leather just has a way that it discolors as it's being bent over time. The dyes that are used to um, dye the leather wear off through wear and tear, and um, you can notice that. Just take a look at any, any old leather belt you got that's been wrapped around. And, you know, sometimes it'll crack and be uh, lighter where the cracks are and towards the edges. And so you keep that in mind, you can get a nice convincing leather effect. Um, I'm being extremely liberal with my highlighting here compared to how I would just typically approach this. 15 minutes is not enough time to show how I would go about painting something like this. This would at least be an hour of work just doing this little section of leather because I work in much thinner layers, but um, I, I don't know if anybody wants to just sit there and watch me paint these extremely thin layers over and over again when I can get almost the same quality by using much thicker layers. It's not going to be as high fidelity, um, to misuse the word, as uh, you know my typical style is, but it, it will be visible on camera and at a glance on the tabletop it'll look good here on the table. So um, I can use this technique and really you know, take care of any um, stark transitions between the highlights by using glazing and other effects after it's all been painted. My mission here is just to paint this up, get it started, and then I can work on those. I've mixed a little bit of blonde hair into that last color. I've got way too much paint on my brush, and it's not watered down nearly enough. Um, but, you know, maybe in the future I can do a video where I just show you in many parts how I would normally paint something like this over and over again. Very light colors and stuff like this. This is me on fast forward mode. And, uh, which I don't, didn't even really know I had until I started shooting video and being concerned with uh, rendering times because that's what takes up so much of my you know, I don't have a dedicated computer for um, rendering videos, so I pretty much lose the ability to use my computer for reference or whatever, the internet, while these things are rendering. So I actually should get a rendering computer because I'm going to be shooting a lot of video in the days to come for the future. It's my new thing, so I should invest in that. And that way I can free up one of my computers so that I can actually have one. These things take hours to render out after they've been uh, manipulated. That's just uh, you know, big learning curve for me. This is all new. I'm just hitting up the highlight edges here to make sure that the main base color is left alone. And uh, this is pretty much just a rough demonstration of, of how I would do it. it would have taken me all again a lot longer to get to this point using my normal technique but for the purposes of this video you can see where I'm going with it at least pretty quickly we're already at 13 minutes I don't even want to go past 15 I'm gonna bring the leather together here more highlights just hitting those areas that I hit last time and for some of you, you may be looking for a fast way to, uh, you know, paint up your miniatures. Maybe you have hordes of miniatures to get through, but you want them to look good. You don't want to rely on the more, uh, you know, faster, rough and dirty techniques. Maybe you want to have a nice layered look to your minis, and, you know, this would be fine, this level right here for you. I mean, I'd be okay with this if I had a ton of these guys to paint up. I think, you know, s several layers of highlights and, and shading is, is more than acceptable. You know, it's, it's not gonna win you any awards maybe but it's it's definitely looking good um, at arm's length at the very least so maybe you're gonna get a lot out of something like this uh, this little quick method here 15 minutes to get a, a piece of the miniature done is not bad at all um, that is if I can finish it in 15 minutes we shall see And I'm going to move up to the next color, the next uh, addition of blonde hair to this. And just, you see how I work from edge to edge. I didn't start highlighting that area I just painted because the paint's a little bit wet there still. So I go back to the 
places that I started earlier so that the paint's completely dry. This is just like a little habit that I'm in so that um, I don't ruin the last color that I placed over by, you know, putting fresh paint onto it while it's still wet. It's actually a thing that I do. Um, I'm just going through here and just enhancing the edges like that. Just bringing out some of the, the crisp detail on the edges there. Again, using your detail brush is imperative for this phase. Almost done. It's at uh, 16 minutes. I think this one will probably run until 20. What can I say about that? When you're painting, time just doesn't work like it normally does. It just speeds by at a rate that's incredible. Where does it go? Okay. I'm just almost at pure blonde hair now. I'm just hitting the, the, the very edges. This is just an edge highlighting technique. Well, I've basically left the mid-tone values alone and only dealt with the edges to get it um, to look like it's acceptable as far as leather is concerned and, and interesting. I like minis that are painted like this. I don't always paint like this. Sometimes I do a lot more work on the mid-tone values and shift colors and everything, but it takes hours. But this is cool. I like for my own gaming stuff. This is the way I like my minis to look, honestly. I, I, they can be more enhanced, but I like them when they look like this. This is a cool effect. I've always, I've always really liked the edge highlighting. As long as it's done, you know, with care, and not just hastily applied. In my case, this is hastily applied. But yeah, it's starting to look a little bit like chipped up leather. Now I'm at the pure blonde hair highlights and that's where I'm gonna stop I've got a low battery warning on my phone anyways and I can do another video on a couple different weathering techniques after this I don't want to include that here because I really don't want it to be that long I'm really hitting these shockingly bright highlights off now I'm just not hitting them on everything that's highlighted just on the, the final the final highlights the areas that I really want to show up as being brighter than other areas. Like that, you know. It's about arm's length. It's well my camera's not gonna focus because I've got it set on autofocus or uh on locked focus, so this is just the start to the leather and it's not done yet so in my next video I will go through and um, weather this down by applying various techniques to make it look more leathery and uh, to knock down these stark highlights I want my highlights to be about two or three levels hotter or higher in uh, you know intensity than than they will be because I do end up glazing this stuff down and the hot the brighter your highlights are, the more you'll be able to see them under your glazes. And that's something I'm compensating for because I'm going to do that. And I know full well going in that that's how I approach leather. It's something I always do is take the highlights up much higher than they should be. Almost done. So yeah, maybe even 15 minutes is, is uh, you know, too much to ask for. Maybe I should just aim for 20 because this is this is done and it's just about to hit the 20 minute mark. So um, I'm going to turn off autofocus and get it so I can spin this around quickly and then I'll close this video out. 
Next video is going to be me uh, doing the weathering technique. Okay, so you can see it. It's, uh, it's just like that. See you next video.